Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Unions divided on whether to accept government's compensation of all. Tension is building among members' group within the Jamaica Confederation of the Trade Unions, JCTU, even as Minister of Finance and Public Service Dr. Nigel Clark warns that public sector workers are in danger of missing this year's payment under the compensation review system. JCTU President Helen Davis White on Tuesday told reporters that five of the 11 unions are ready to sign off on the finance minister's offer but declined to give the names. We're at a point of decisiveness because some are ready and some are not, Davis White said, confirming that there are tensions within the ranks. There are persons who want the money and others who don't. They feel that we need to delve into some issues deeper. And so there's a kind of tension, I would say. He said work is on its earnest to smooth out these problems as public sectors buckle under inflation. With the exception of the police, teachers and nurses, there are approximately 100,000 public sector workers. The Jamaica Civil Service Association, which carries the largest membership, is on board. The Finance Ministry has agreed to a guaranteed minimum increase of 17.5% on net pay for all public sector workers, with effect from April 1. This is expected to be done over three years. Mileage rate for travel officers is to be increased by 100 per kilometers, up from 56 kilometers at present. To settle the lack of increase in transportation allowances for the 2021-2022 fiscal year, there will be a payment of 10% on every level of those allowances. As a result, there would be no increase in rates as the lump sum would be viewed as a settlement of this obligation. At the end of the day, if all is possible, we would want to come away with an unified position, Davis White said, adding that the standoff mirrors the negotiations of 2017. The sticking point, Davis White said, include whether workers will converge to the new scale on a point-to-point -point basis or if all will converge the minimum of 17.5% regardless of seniority obtained before. We have several issues, but the most uniformed of them is the conversation, Davis White said. He said the finance minister's encouragement could be seen as intimidation by some unions but noted that the push for an agreement from Clark is not new. On Tuesday, he told the House of Representatives that if an agreement was not struck with unions for this fiscal year, there was no guarantee of when public sector workers would receive the payback. It is absolutely imperative that we conclude in sufficient time that the payments that are due for 2022 are made in the fiscal year 2022-2023, Clark warned. He said that the government has been very accommodating in terms of the timeline but said that there is a natural limit. Noting that eight months of payment have already passed and generally make it ten, Clark said units must sign in sufficient time. Ten months of what we proverbially call back pay is a large amount that is being budgeted for this fiscal year. If it is not paid in this fiscal year, the space to accommodate it in the next fiscal year does not exist, the finance minister stated. Clark has proposed a $60 billion increase in the national budget in the first supplementary estimates 2022-2023, which he tabled on Tuesday. It is comprised of increases to non-deprecurrent expenditure of $52.7 billion, capital expenditure of $1.3 billion, and debt service of $6 billion. Clark said the increase results in a proposed review 2022-2023 budget of $972 billion. Mother of alleged MP murderer released from custody the mother of Sylvia Sutherland, who was taken into custody after he last went to Obscon Minutes before a court appearance to answer to charges for the 2019 murder of former People's National Party Member of Parliament, Dr. Linville Bromfield, has been released. Sutherland's mother, who was a shorty for his $800,000 bail bond, was offered to be taken into custody by Supreme Court Judge Leighton Pusey until arrangements are made in relation to the bond after her son fled. Reporters were reliably informed that the sum was paid over the very evening and the mother released. In the meantime, however, investigations ordered by Director of Public Prosecutions Paula Llewellyn, King's Counsel, into possible attempt to pervert the Court of Justice in respect of the Sutherlands. There has, however, still been no information on the whereabouts of Sutherland to date, Deputy Commissioner of Police in charge of crime Fitzbilly told reporters. Sutherland, for whom a manhunt was triggered, is facing charges of murder and Miss Prison of felony in connection with the stabbing death of Bromfield at his place of gardens home in Portland on February 2, 2019. Sutherland, who has been granted bail by the parish court as part of his bail conditions, 
was residing with his parents. Last Wednesday morning, Sutherland, with his parents in tow, after meeting with his attorney, British Happy the King's Council, was reportedly en route to the Supreme Court, where the trial was to begin when he disappeared after exiting their vehicle. Peter told the court that according to the account from Sutherland's mother, the routine would be that they would drop the accused at the entrance of the court, and they would move their vehicle to go and park, and then come around while he registers at the entrance at the Supreme Court. This morning, what obtained based on what the surety is saying is that the route was the same as before, safe and except, when they dropped him off at the entrance of the court, he did not come inside the courtyard, he went suddenly, and as a result of that, they thought it suspicious. Of him down to speak with him, but he made his way the attorney at law told the tribunal at the time. Champigny has, in the meantime, declared that he has no intention of continuing to represent Sutherland and sought leave of the court to be released from the arrangement. Justice Putin, at the time in ordering that Sutherland's mother be taken into custody, had said she would remain in custody of the court until arrangements are made in relation to the bond. He said those arrangements may be not be necessarily related only to the immediate transfer of the funds. Meanwhile, officials at the island sea and airports were placed on high alert for the accused for whom a stop order had been placed on. Boat captain fined two million for smuggling ganja. A boat captain was on Wednesday fined a total of two million in the Manchester Parish Court for smuggling ganja. Richard Lindo was arrested and charged after the vessel he and two men were traveling in was intercepted by the Jamaica Defence Force Coast Guard in, on September 21, 2021, off the coast of Manchester, and 1,680 pounds of ganja seized in 38 knitted bags. Throughout the course of the proceedings, the other two occupants of the vessel, Lloyd Bennett and Kilter James, abscond bail. Lindsay pleaded guilty on September 22nd of this year to possession dealing and trafficking ganja. On Wednesday, he was fined $15,000 or six months imprisonment for possession of ganja, one million or two years for dealing in ganja, and one million or two years for trafficking ganja. Lindsay was represented by attorney Thomas Levine. Meanwhile, the person who stood as surety for Bennett was taken into custody before being offered bail. Bennett had previously pleaded guilty and should have appeared on Wednesday for sentencing, but his attorney informed the court that information was that Bennett had left the island and is in custody in the Cayman Islands. The person who stood as surety was offered bail in the sum of half a million dollars and is to report to the Pedro Plains Police Station weekly. The surety is to return to court on December 9. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification.